So for about two years now, I've been toying with the idea of buying a robot lawnmower. So when I saw a bunch of YouTube videos pop up for a new robot mower called the EcoFlow Blade, I let curiosity get the best of me and purchased the blade on Amazon for a whopping $3,000. So could this be the end of me having to cut my lawn ever again? Well, today we're gonna find out. So if you're not familiar with robot lawnmowers, the basic idea is for it to mow your lawn on a regular schedule. It should be able to navigate around obstacles, know when it's raining, keep itself charged, stay within your property boundaries, and notify you if there are any issues. Most robot mowers do all of these things, but some do a better job than others. Now I'll tell you right off the bat that I'm actually gonna be returning the blade, but before I get too deep into my reasons for returning it, I first need to talk a little bit about robot lawnmowers. So as I just said, I paid around $3,000 for the blade, which is obviously a lot of money. For comparison, the average lawn cutting service is gonna cost anywhere from maybe one to $2,000 a year on the low end. So spending $3,000 will be like paying for a lawn service for maybe a year or two. But here's the thing, even the most expensive and sophisticated robot mower is still going to require you to go out and trim your lawn if you want it to look its best. So in other words, you still have to go out and do a good amount of yard work even after buying one of these. So the main reason that I hadn't tried a robot mower until now is because even though they've been around for over a decade, most of them still require you to put down something called perimeter wire. This is a really long wire that you place around your entire property and it tells the robot not to mow past that line. This requires requires quite a bit of time and effort, so it's not really ideal considering you may not even like the robot mower. The other reason I hadn't purchased a robot mower sooner is because mowing the lawn is great exercise, which I can definitely use, and can even be therapeutic at times, so I didn't really want to give that up. So while I was browsing YouTube a few weeks ago, I saw a few videos of the EcoFlow blade, and when I saw that it didn't require a perimeter wire, I was intrigued enough to buy one and see what the hype was all about. So the blade is a robot lawnmower made by a company called EcoFlow, which until now appeared to primarily sell devices such as power stations and AC units. I found it quite odd that this brand would be releasing such an innovative robot lawnmower, considering they don't seem to sell any other robotic products, especially considering it includes technology that even some of the most popular robot brands have yet to release. Now the blade is not the first robot mower to ditch the perimeter wire, but it does have another trick up its sleeve. The blade can be purchased with a sweeper kit, which allows it to actually sweep your lawn and bag it. This is a feature I haven't seen on any other robot mower and it works great for things like leaves, dead grass, and other small debris. Besides that, EcoFlow claims that the blade can handle lawns up to a half acre in size and it has a cutting width of around 10 inches and a battery runtime of up to 120 minutes. Now this seems like it would be perfect for my property since it's just under a quarter acre and it's a fairly simple layout, but we'll get to that later. So the way that the blade gets rid of the perimeter wire is by using GNSS or precision GPS tracking with a large GPS antenna that you stake into your lawn. Now this sounds great in theory, but I did run into a few issues with this, which I'll talk about later in the video. So in the box, you get the GPS antenna, a long cable for the antenna, the charging base, a long power cord for the charging base, a bunch of stakes for the wires in the base, and of course the blade robot itself, which thankfully comes fully pre-assembled. Now I mentioned that I paid $3,000 for this, but I should also mention that the actual sale price for the robot itself was around $2,700, but I also opted to buy it with the lawn sweeper, which is an additional $300 for a total of $3,000. I should also mention that this was a temporary temporary sale price and the actual retail price is 2900 without the sweeper and 3200 with the sweeper. Now I gotta say that the setup process was a bit nightmarish considering how new it was when I got it, but most of my issues were in the app and I think they've actually worked out a lot of those bugs already. The first order of business is plugging everything in and finding the best location for the GPS antenna. For some reason this was really challenging for my property. I don't have any large trees near my house and I have a pretty clear view of the sky so I expected no GPS issues, but I had a ton of problems finding a good spot for the antenna. The app shows you the signal strength and lets you know if the spot is suitable, but I found that it would often for no reason just drop the signal to something unusable and force you to move the antenna several times. After about an hour, I finally moved it far away enough from the house that it was happy. Once I did that, I staked down the charger and the antenna and ran the power cord to an outdoor outlet. 
Once that part was done, I spent around two hours trying to get it connected to Wi-Fi and spent another hour on a firmware update. Now, as I'm writing this review, they've actually released a couple of firmware updates that supposedly address some of these issues. So hopefully the setup process is much smoother now. But once I got the mower's firmware updated, it was ready to map out my property. So to create a map, you use the EcoFlow app with your phone connected to the robot via Bluetooth, and you simply drive the robot around the perimeter of your lawn and walk behind it. This was mostly easy and significantly better than running perimeter wire around my entire property. You can add up to two working areas, which are basically areas between walkways or driveways, and you can add restricted zones for places you don't want the robot to go. Once that's done, you can go to the robot settings, set your cutting height, set the mowing mode, which is basically the speed, and you're ready to go. I found it best to cut my lawn pretty high since it's not perfectly flat, so I set it somewhere between two and a half and three inches and left it at normal speed. From here, you can hit the start button and it'll cut your entire lawn, or you can tap on select area and choose only one of your working zones. Once you hit start, the mower immediately starts cutting your lawn. And the app also gives you separate settings for what they call edge work mode. So if you'll notice in the video when I was walking around the perimeter of the cutting zone, I stayed a few inches away from the edge and that's because at the end of the cut, the mower will actually go into what they call edge work mode and do however many laps you tell it to do. Now I found edge work mode not to work all that well, but I'll get to that later in the video. When it first started cutting, I was surprised at how quiet it was. Now it's not silent or anything, but it's significantly quieter than even my full size electric lawnmower. So now would be a good time to talk about the mower's design. I'd argue that the blade is one of the best looking robot mowers. It has a bit of a futuristic rover look to it with an adjustable cutting deck and strange front wheel design. And on the top of the robot, you're gonna find a big red stop button for you to stop the robot in case there's an emergency. Also on the top of the robot is gonna be the rain sensors because it can detect when it's raining or wet. And you can even set a rain delay so the robot's not cutting wet grass. Also on the back of the robot is gonna be your power start and recharge buttons. And considering this is a rear wheel drive robot, it's gonna have big knobby tires on the back. And it uses LiDAR sensors as well as a camera for navigation and obstacle avoidance. And if we flip the robot over, you see the 10 inch spinning disc, which contains three small blades. So these blades obviously do all the cutting and this is a pretty common cutting deck design for robot mowers. So what's up with these weird front wheels? Well, the front wheels don't actually turn like you'd expect. They're in a permanent angle position which allows the robot to turn easily using the rear wheels. And not only do the front wheels spin, but instead of tires, the front wheels actually have spinning rings which allows the robot to make all sorts of maneuvers without much resistance from the front wheels. Now this is a cool concept in theory, but I actually had a few issues with this design on my lawn. So the blade tries its best to cut straight lines across your yard and it actually does if you have a completely flat lawn and no GPS issues but if you have really hilly terrain or steep hills or slopes then you might run into some problems. Even though the front wheels do a great job at producing the least amount of resistance, this is an issue when trying to drive in a straight line on an incline since you're relying 100% on the back wheels to keep the robot straight. This is almost impossible to do on a hill considering the weight of the robot, so sometimes it might sway to the left or right trying to keep itself straight. One way I found to combat this was to set the mowing mode to gentle instead of normal. This slows the speed down quite a bit which allowed it to do a much better job of correcting itself over hilly terrain. And EcoFlow also released a recent firmware update that improved how it maneuvers on hills, but it did seem to still struggle a bit in certain parts of my lawn, so I think it's more of a design limitation. But overall, the blade did a pretty good job cutting most of my backyard when I set it to gentle mode, and as you can see, it even gives some nice cutting stripes. Now, it doesn't let you change the direction of the stripes or how the mower navigates, but I'm sure that's something they can add later. One thing I really liked about the blade was the lawn sweeper kit. This is essentially a bag that attaches to the back of the mower and it has a rubber sweeper that spins and sweeps debris off your grass and into the bag. I was really surprised at how effective it was at sweeping thatch and other debris from my lawn, which would have taken an eternity for me to do by hand. The only other two downsides to the sweeper is that it can't cut and sweep at the same time, so you have to do one or the other. And the other downside is that the blade does a much better job maneuvering around the lawn when it doesn't have the sweeper attached. But considering how well it works for sweeping and raking, I couldn't fault it for that. 
All right, so this is the point in the video where I talk about some of my issues with the blade, which led to my decision to ultimately return it. So most of my issues have to do with bugs within the app, GPS issues, and the overall design. Now I have to say that it does appear that EcoFlow is listening to their customers as they just released two pretty major firmware updates, which addressed many of my previous issues. So I've since removed them from this video. So what are my leftover concerns? Well, the first issue is a pretty major one and that was related to GPS. So as I mentioned earlier, the mower uses GPS for tracking itself in relation to the GPS antenna in your yard. Well, I found that with the GPS antenna in the back of my house, the mower always has a bad GPS signal when it travels to the front or sides of my house. This signal issue led to some pretty spotty cutting in my front lawn, as well as a ton of navigation issues. This resulted in the mower losing track of where it was and actually ended up in my neighbor's yard, my driveway, and even the street on a few occasions, even though none of those areas are part of the map. To make matters worse, when it was in the street, it was stuck because it couldn't turn back into the yard because of its wheel design. Thankfully, I live in a decent area, but considering the app never sent me a notification that it was stuck, it could have sat in the street for hours, and if it didn't get stolen, it could have easily gotten run over, which is not a good way to lose $3,000. And speaking of getting stolen, EcoFlow was nice enough to give it a built-in LTE connection along with GPS, so if someone does steal it, it won't work outside of your perimeter, and in theory, it could be found. Now, I haven't tested that theory out, but it does seem like it could work. The second issue is that the iPhone app has never sent me a notification. The only way I know that the robot is stuck or has an issue is by opening the app and looking at the status. So there were times where I went two or three hours thinking that it was cutting my lawn, but it actually got stuck five minutes into the cut. Another minor issue is that you can't tell it to cut a specific area within your working zone. So I had to basically have it cut my entire lawn, even if I just wanted it to hit a certain spot. So for example, it would have been nice to just tell it to go to this area and sweep up the leaves, but all I can have it do is sweep or cut the entire lawn. And even though you can manually drive the mower around the yard using the app, you can't manually control it and cut or sweep at the same time. So the only way for it to cut or sweep is by starting a whole cutting job. All right, so let's set some expectations here. If you've never owned a robot lawnmower, you're probably thinking that you'll never have to mow your lawn ever again. Well, even though some robot mowers are great at keeping your lawn cut, the reality is that you're probably still gonna need a real lawnmower to hit areas it missed, which is exactly what I had to do with my front lawn. And as I mentioned earlier, you still have to trim the lawn, so it's not like you can just kick your feet up and not do any work. But if you're looking for something that can knock out most of the cutting for you, and you have a nice flat lawn with a great GPS signal, then the blade might work great for you. But considering how much it costs and the fact that it doesn't work all that great for my lawn, I didn't feel that good about my $3,000 purchase, so I have to return it. Now I've had my share of frustrating issues with the blade, but I assume that most of these issues will be addressed in the future as they've already started doing that. And I do want to point out that even though the blade didn't work for me, it doesn't mean that everybody who likes it is lying to you. The blade is packed with a ton of cool features like the sweeping attachment, mass mapping process and lack of the perimeter wire, which are all bright spots that I enjoyed. At the end of the day, I have to assume that it can only get better from here, but I'd love to know what you guys think about it. Do you have the blade? Do you have any issues with it? Do you love it? Are you thinking about buying one? Let me know in the comment section so we can talk about it. And also let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this of cool gadgets and other products. And if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and mash that like button for me if you found this video helpful. Also make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.